ये रेडियो पाकिस्तान पॉडकास्ट है Listeners, this is News and Current Affairs channel of Radio Pakistan. I am your host Javed Siddiq with weekly program Diplomatic Session. Listeners and viewers, in this program we discuss bilateral relations, cooperation and other important developments of mutual interest with the diplomats of Pakistan's friendly countries and regional and international blocs. Today in our show we have with us the ambassador to pakistan uh, of indonesia his excellency adam togio uh, this show is being broadcast simultaneously from news and current affairs channel and fm 101 networks of radio pakistan on saturdays at 6:15 pm ambassador thank you very much for joining us in this show thanks for having me mr uh, Ambassador, uh, Pakistan and Indonesia both are very uh, important and big countries in the Islamic world. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the uh, relationship at the political level between these two countries? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me, Mr. Javed. And uh, really, you know, it's an honor for me to be here uh, in these sessions. And uh, you mentioned about the bilateral relations. I mean, the Indonesia and Pakistan enjoy cordial relations, and I think. Uh, Uh, we have uh, very solid uh, foundations uh, uh, bef- even uh, you know uh, uh, since the inception of the indonesian independence and pakistan independence which almost at the same uh, period of time so more than seven decades more than seven decades yes. and uh, we uh, you know we once again we enjoy the uh, good relationship and uh, due to the solid uh, foundations of bilateral relations and i think there are Uh, some mechanisms which uh, contribute to uh, elevate yeah, the bilateral relations in those politics because we have uh, you know uh, p- a political uh, bilateral political consultations and also uh, so what what is the mechanism for this consultation intergovernmental mm-hmm. or there's a committee intergovernmental in, yes. intergovernmental uh, you know committees we have a bilateral uh, political dialogue and uh complementing to the uh, uh political uh, dialogues we also have uh arrangements on the economy because i think you know uh, economy, economy is the name of the game the name of the game yes. the backbone of the bilateral relations yes. lies on the economy and uh i think uh, in addition to that you know if you looking at the bilateral relation we should uh use uh, i i prefer to look at in the tripod using a tripod method once the bil- uh, politic Uh, security affairs and the second the economy and the third uh, very important pillar also on the social cultural aspect yes. because those you know uh, give contributions to you know to strengthen you know the foundations of bilateral relations True. whereby the indonesians and pakistan yes. can enhance the bilateral relations uh, ambassador uh, as you mentioned economy is very important in these in this day and age uh, so how could the two countries pakistan and indonesia enhance their trade and uh, economic relations which are very important mm. well uh thank you for raising these questions um prior to the uh, now we have uh, a preferential trade agreement concluded in 2000 PTA. Uh, yeah the pta yes. uh, which was concluded in t- 2013 and if you compare the data you see the 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 trade uh bilateral trades uh double you know uh, no days we enjoy 2.5 to 2.6 uh, billion billion dollars billion dollars annually yes. as compared to the priors of the PTA which only half of it and the trajectory is positive even last years we also uh, saw the uh, trajectory positive of this uh bilateral relations and there is a lot of uh, potentials in terms of uh, improving the number because uh once again uh, indonesia i think uh, uh is in the 10 biggest uh you know trading partner of uh, pakistan so yeah. by pakistan so so uh, constitute uh, you know the big uh, part bigger uh, part partner also for indonesia and uh, when we look at the uh, the potential there is still huge potential for you know uh Yeah, that's that's relation. very important, Excellency, because uh, the, these two countries are very important countries, mm. huge population, 
things. And uh, then why uh, the trade and economic relationship is not growing at the pace mm -hmm. that we desire? Mm -hmm. Well, there is uh, a lot of uh, factors certainly, yeah. but this is something that we are we are now discussing to uh, conclude what we call the trips in agreement, in goods agreement. So yeah. uh, moving, you know, one step further by expanding, you know, the trade, you know, bilateral trade, because we see once again there is a lot of uh, complementarities in terms of the uh, uh, products being produced by Indonesia or likewise being produced in, in, pa uh, in Pakistan. Let me give an example, textile. Textile is very important industry for Pakistan. But the raw materials, you know, uh, cotton. Yeah, the cotton is also yes. the polyesters because some, yes. you know, textiles also use polyesters. Uh, you know, uh, Pakistan's import from Indonesia. But uh, Indonesia also uh, import the textiles, the garment productions from Pakistan. The finished so, products. The finished products. So I yes. think this is one of the areas whereby we see a complementarities between the two countries. And a part of that, I think, what also important. If you look at the strategic, the geo economic strategy of Pakistan, we keep uh, advising friends in Indonesia. If you look at Pakistan, please look at beyond Pakistan because Pakistan and the Central Asia is, is huge market, huge potential. Not only the Central Asia, but also if you combine with uh, South, South Asia, Asia yes. it's very huge, yeah. huge market, uh, yeah. close to two, two billion uh, uh, people, which is huge market and. The infrastructures being developed by CFX certainly would, would serve a game changes because nowadays it is yes. easily to connect a landlocked state in the Central exactly. Asia and the western part of China using the, you know, the infrastructures of the CFX. So this is one of the areas whereby uh, we are very keen also to, uh, to invest in the in, uh, special economic zone in Pakistan. In fact, there are... SCZs. Yeah, uh, SCZs. The CZs, yes. yes. And uh, in fact, there are uh, two of the Indonesian uh, investors already, you know, uh, opened their um, uh, businesses in one in Faisalabad and one in Karachi, and they are also... In the special economic zones. Yeah, both are in the special That's economic... That's great news. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we also, they, when I met with the CEO of those, those two companies, they informed me that they also wants to invest in Guada Airport because... Besides, the uh, Master, uh, besides uh, textile products, mm that Indonesia imports from Pakistan. Uh, other uh, products like uh, surgical instruments yep. and uh, the uh, uh, other issues, uh, other uh, uh, products like, uh, uh, you know, the s sports goods. Yep. Pakistan produces mm -hmm. best sports goods. I, I, I had a chance to visit uh, Shialkot, you know, Shialkot, the golden yes. triangles of the economy, Shialkot, Guadjanwala, Gwadar. And Gwadar. Gujranwala. Gujranwala. Gujranwala, Shalkot, and uh, very close to Lahore. Faisalabad also. Faisalabad. And yes. I saw, uh, you know, I saw with my own eyes how, you know, the... the uh, surgical instruments are being prepared. Surgical instruments, you know, they they made the, uh, they, they produced the surgical instruments with Rather a lot of precision. Yes. Which uh, I think no wonder that you know surgical instrument from uh, uh, Pakistan is also very popular. Uh, very popular nowadays, yes. including in Indonesia, because we also import the surgical instrument from Pakistan. Right. In addition to the in agriculture product like uh, kinos, which is also very popular Kino. in Indonesia. Yes. yes. What about mangoes? Mangoes. We are in in the, the you know in the process of you know opening our market to mango. Uh, uh, I guess. Uh, because Pakistani mangoes are also very popular in various countries of the world. You know, you know what, uh, uh, Mr. Javed, I spent my times in London. You know, oh. you know, uh, prior as to, a diplomat. Yes, as a diplomat prior to Islamabad. So, I, I knew uh, mango Pakistan from 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 London because it's easily found in in the UK. Yeah, yes. Because you have a huge uh, you diaspora, diaspora, of diaspora like mango, and I really, when I tasted and. It's really, you know, uh, it's very tasty, delicious, you know, uh, it's very sweet, you know, very yes. sweet uh, Pakistani mango. So uh, when I arrived here, I, I, I learned that you have more than 50 varieties of mango, which is very, uh, very huge variety. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I myself, you know, in the last uh, you know, 12 months, I had a chance also to, 
uh, to taste, you know, uh, during, you know, the uh, summer times whereby, you know, we find abundance of mangoes. It's very delicious mango. So, while you are here as ambassador of Indonesia, I hope that uh, you will put in efforts to export more and more Pakistani mangoes, delicious, sweet mangoes to Indonesia. Sure, and uh, it is also the, the intentions of the Indonesian government because I think we, the, the governments also offer uh, you know, lowering, you know, tariff for mango, you know, we, you know, voluntarily put uh, additional mango in the list of product being right. traded for the two countries. Ambassador, you have also mentioned uh, the importance, geographical, geopolitical importance of Pakistan, because it is an important mm -hmm. country of South Asia. It can also uh, connect other countries to Central Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, but that connectivity depends on peace and stability in Afghanistan. So how do you look at the situation in Afghanistan right now? Well, I think uh, nowadays uh, we have to look at the, you know, the humanitarian crisis. Um, more than 20, 23 billion millions of people in Afghans uh, are the risk of, uh, you know, uh, access to, to food. And I think the international community should, you know, uh, uh, help, help you know, yes. uh, re reaching out to, to yeah. Afghanistan people to help them, you know, because uh, if the situation is prolongs, then it might affect, you know, not only the the, the, the stability in, in, in Afghanistan, but also the, uh, in, the regions, region. in the region. Yes. So I think the Indonesian government, you know, also working st together with the international community to uh, to provide the humanitarian uh, assistance to Afghanistan peoples, we already make a pledge three uh, million US dollar for Afghanistan to, uh, to Afghanistan humanitarian aid. The humanitarian aid, and uh, I think uh, simultaneously we are also uh, yeah, encouraging, like the international community is also encouraging, and uh, uh, the um, the government in uh, in Afghanistan is to to be more inclusive and also you know, uh, uh, give uh, protections to human rights as they are already... They are you know, promised. Make, yeah, uh, uh, they are yeah. promised. But I think this is the part of the international community so to help them, to help them to meet, you know, their promises on the three important aspects of the inclusive, uh, forming the inclusive government, protections of human, human rights, rights, including the right of <coughs> humans, and also uh, 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 cut you know, the, you know, uh, preventing the Afghan uh, soils to become a safe haven for the ter international Terrorist, terrorism. Yes. So I think that's the, that's the uh, uh, commitments of the global communities also, including Indonesia, to help the uh, peoples in Afghanistan to overcome these, you know, difficult situations. So um, <clears throat> the international community is not giving formal recognition to Afghanistan, the current interim government of Afghanistan, because of these factors, hmm. uh, I mean, the, the interim government of Taliban is not uh, carrying out the promises that it had made uh, to the international community, uh, giving human rights, uh, priority to human rights, uh, opening schools for women, and uh, free, free and, uh, you know, hmm. fair media in Afghanistan. So these are the conditions. Do you think that Afghans are, uh, the interim government in Afghanistan is moving towards that direction? I think uh, the, we have to look at now the, the pressing, you know, uh, pressing challenge that, that, you know, Afghanistan's people and the government of Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan's uh, facing is, you know, how to overcome this humanitarian uh, crisis. Uh, crisis. And, and I think this is part of the responsibility of international community to help you know, the uh, Afghanistan people by channeling the humanitarian assistance. Uh, so I think that's that's very, very important. And uh, uh, simultaneously, you know, we, the constructive engagement is also uh, needed to, uh, to the uh, uh, Taliban, uh, yes. reminding them their promises, but at the same time also helping them, you know, so they can, you know, meet their promises. In fact, you know, we, we learned also from uh, the news like a couple of days ago, some of the decree already been, uh, you know. Executed. Yeah, executed. And yeah. also the decree already been made by the Taliban governments in, once again, protections of the women. Yes. So I think uh, 
let's let's you know uh, we focus on the humanitarian uh, you know uh, crisis that they are facing okay. how the international community can help and simultaneously helping uh, Taliban also to meet their uh, promises on three aspects Western Pakistan and Indonesia both are very prominent uh, Islamic countries mm -hmm. but the Islamic world uh, as a whole is facing a lot of challenges uh, the issue of Kashmir and Palestine are burning issues. Uh, the OIC and other organizations of the Islamic countries have not been able uh, to get a resolution of these uh, problems and these crises. What could be done uh, for the resolution of the Kashmir issue and the Palestinian issue? Well, I think when 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 we look at the OICs, uh, I think people tend to look at on the uh, political and security dimensions of operations, which, you know, uh, with the backgrounds, uh, uh, the, the conflict, because I think I, I, I would like to refer to one of the studies conducted by the OICs in uh, 2019 on, by one of the institutions of the OICs, whereby the studies indicate that, you know, 60 percent of the uh, conflict, the global uh, conflicts, are located on the OIC geography. Yes. And in addition to that, you know, 39 of, you know, refugees as a result of the or international, internally displaced persons come out, out of... From the Islamic countries. Yeah, from Islamic yes. uh, countries. But people tend to overlook, you know, the, the, uh, the economic and the social developments, you know, being uh, brought by the OIC's co cooperations. In fact, uh, there's a lot of, uh, if you see the, the uh, you know, the uh, statistic you see is that, you know, the intra-trade of the OIC's member countries keep increasing. Nowadays, it's close to 18% intra-trade, which is, it's just quite, uh, you know, uh, some things that, you know, uh, really... Encouraging. Encouraging. Yes. If you look at... ASEAN, for instance, the ASEAN intra-trade of ASEAN is 24 percent. Still, you know, long way, long way to reach, for instance, uh, EU, whereby yeah. you know 80 percent of intra-trade now is in EU. But I think that's the encouraging developments on the economy, whereby the the uh, you know the OASIS member countries now once again expanding their collaborations on the economy. Not to mention also on different aspects like the uh, social and the uh, the cultural affairs, because I think this is very important also to to build, you know, uh, uh, cultural bridge, you know, between, you know, uh, ummah, between, yeah. uh, you know, countries. But, uh, Ambassador, uh, OIC countries are very important countries, mm. oil rich, they have wealth, they have a huge population, but uh, they have not been able to exercise their influence mm. at a global level so that these two burning issues uh, confronting the Islamic world, Kashmir and Palestine, could have been resolved. Mm. Well, um, let me once again, I think uh, I, okay, this is very important. I mean, I made once again the reference to the uh, OSS Outlook Report, which is, you know, uh, published in 2019, which is, uh, is very important because this uh, report underscores what were the challenge facing the OICs in terms of the political. They said that, uh, you know, the conflicting interests in regional and global politics, bilateral disputes, and lack of the political will, those are two factors that, you know, in the end contribute to limit the roles of the OIC. So I think, um, I think this statement once again underscores the challenges of the OIC. If you look at the Palestine issue, I think we have also to be mindful that uh, for, uh, for 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 Indonesia, certainly this is so, the issues of solidarity of Islam. But yes. beyond that, the importance of the issues be, because this is unfinished business of colonialism. You look at the history; you see, yes, you know right. how the Palestinian issue was actually was raised even before it, its genesis took place. The how genesis it, yes. even before the UN; it yes. was in the League of Nations. Yes. Once the League of Nations unable to resolve this issue, then they transfer to the U United Nations. So uh, until now, unfinished business uh, of the uh, self-determination. So I think we, once again, in, in expressing our solidarity to the Palestinians, because we see this is one of the outstanding issues, uh, which is long overdue. 
So I think with, with that, then the international community, the OIC, you know, we yeah, express our support on, you know, the, the struggles of the you know, Palestinian well. uh, people. And also the Kashmiris, you know, they, they are also suffering and the, the United Nations had promised with the Kashmiris that <clears throat> they will be given the right of self-determination which has not been able to, uh, the UN has not been able to carry out its promise. The, the OIC, I, I believe the OIC have a mechanisms on the Kashmir, as the, you know, the OIC yeah. established uh, uh, the contact group. The contact group, yes. the contact groups. There on, is a contact group, yes. On, on, on the Kashmiri. For uh, in Indonesia, uh, I believe when we, you know, uh, we, you know, uh, we believe that, you know, the Kashmiri issue uh, should be uh, resolved, you know, through, you know, mechanisms, uh, the existing mechanisms and uh, uh, bilateralism between uh, Pakistan and, and India. India. So, because I think, you know, this is, uh, this is very important, you know, for resolving, you know, Kashmiri to, through the bilateral, you know, uh, mechanisms. Ambassador Pakistan in Indonesia, uh, you have talked about uh, the trade relations and economic cooperation. Uh, what could be done to enhance and strengthen the strategic cooperation between these two important Islamic countries? Yes, uh, well, Mr. Jafid, I think uh, one of the very uh, interesting, uh, you know, facts that the ASEAN uh, Pakistan is also, uh, you know, becoming sectoral dialogue part yes. of ASEAN. And I, I mention ASEAN because if you look at ASEAN, it's also a huge market, consisting of close yes. to seven, indeed uh, it is seven a million, you know, uh, a market. So uh, trade between Pakistan and ASEAN is very few, only seven billion annually. It's one percent as compared to China and and ASEAN. Now. Pakistan's have the FTA with, with, with China. So, you know, using the FTA, I think uh, it is a good, you know, for high cost to, you know, penetrate, you know, the market in Asia. Likewise, we also want to, to encourage Pakistan to see Indonesia as also as, you know, a hub when, you know, Pakistan wants to expand trade to the region. Yes. So, not only Indonesia, but also beyond Indonesia. So that's, that's the, the approach that we are, you know, uh, uh, keep promoting here in, in Pakistan. Because I think if you look at the studies, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, research already been projected that, that the futures of the global economy relies on the East, East Asia, yes. okay, the China, Korea, Japan, ASEAN. But, you East know, is rising. East is rising. Yes. But uh, if, if you see the focus here, you know, when I arrived here in Islamabad, I found Islamabad is like a mini capital of the think tank. Various think tanks are located in Islamabad, even in Pakistan. But no single institute have devoted their studies on East Asia, on the economy. So this is something that I think uh, need... Uh, yeah, it, it needs to be given a serious thought Yes. Uh, and I think that is the need of the time. Yeah, this is something that I keep, you know, mentioning uh, during my interactions with, you know, people Pakistani in Pakistan. officials. Yeah, not only Pakistani officials, but also with, with uh, think tank communities here. So look at the East Asia. Why not, you know, establishing, uh, you know, a focus studies on that, the economic potential, because in the end, you know, the global economy relies on the Asia Pacific. But the current uh, government, uh, is pursuing this policy and uh, they have termed this policy as look east look policy. East. So I think uh, Pakistan is well aware mm. of the potential of enhancing its trade and economic relations with the ASEAN countries. So uh, do you think that there's a movement forward from Pakistan's side? Yes, I think uh, the, the government already made uh, uh, enormous effort in trying to once again to uh, to make uh, good connections with the ASEAN and in the East Asia. But I think the work, it is responsibility not only for the government, but all stakeholders also should, you know, contribute in the process, the business community, the, the private sector, the private sector. Yeah. So they should the explore the possibility. Precisely, that's the point. So here, um, uh, Mr. Ambassador, my question would be, 
what role Indonesia can play uh, to facilitate mm. Pakistani traders and investors and entrepreneurs uh, to find chances uh, of uh, enhancing and increasing their business in ASEAN region. Mm. Now, uh, we, uh, I, I, I prefer to use it by uh, using like uh, two prong approaches. First, using the ins institutionalized uh, institution uh, uh, relationship between Pakistan and ASEAN. And I think with Pakistans and uh, ASEANs, uh, we already adopt, you know, like a plan of actions whereby, you know, we identify there are 11 areas of collaboration. And trade, also one of the areas, you know, in, in those uh, collaborations, in addition to the economy and the cultural affairs. And the second uh, approach uh, will be on the bilateral uh, relations because using the bilateral uh, relations also can can serve as channel to expand for the you know the relationship between Pakistan and ASEAN. Like I mentioned uh, uh, previously, that Indonesia is very keen to you know to uh, to support uh, uh, Pakistan's in uh, its engagement in ASEAN. In Even ASEAN we countries. Are you know, fully supportive of the ASEAN, uh, Pakistan aspirations to become full dialect partner of ASEAN. And on the economic sectors, we have the PTA. And I think uh, with that, that hopefully we would be able to, you know, once again, you know, uh, look beyond. Uh, in the, for, from Indonesia side, we see uh, Pakistan and we look beyond Pakistan. As a in hub Central Asia to Central and Asia. other South Asian regions. Yeah, yes. not, not only to Central Asia, but also to the western part of China, yes. because I think nowadays, if yes. you use the Gwadar airport and then, you know, connect the it to CPAC the western... The CPAC is providing that opportunity. Yeah. So it's probably less, uh, uh, will, will become a, a more economical, you know, connecting the western yes. part of China using the Gwadar rather than, uh, you know... Ambassador, what are the prospects of uh, the Indonesian entrepreneurs mm. or investors of investing in Pakistan? Mm. As I mentioned to you, uh, we are now have two uh, investors from Indonesia, and uh, there are some more already indicate their willingness, you know, to invest. To come here. To come here, and even the existing two uh, uh, investors, the two they want to we expand, yeah, yeah, to expand their businesses in in Pakistan because, you know, uh, Pakistan is huge in terms of the the market is yeah. huge also. It's more than two two hundred million, and I think one thing that you know uh, we keep mentioning and also uh, keep reminding you know, the business community in Indonesia, please look Pakistan beyond Pakistan. Look Pakistan as a hub uh, yes. uh, to the you know, wider region. True. So with that, you know, business people usually, they, they, they will you know, count how, many, how big is the market. Yes. So this is very important. Um, so we keep their interests are basically the size of the market. The size of the market. And the prospects of promoting their own mm. business interests. Precisely, and I think the the, uh, uh, the government of Pakistan also uh, made a lot of effort in trying to improve the uh, the investment climate. If you look at ease of doing business, ranked you know list by the World Bank, you see you know the leapfrog. I mean, there was the advancements on the uh, the policies of uh, Pakistani government, who uh, nowadays seems to once again to attract more and more an investment. Uh, you know. I think the COVID, I think, become more relevant nowadays because we we can no longer rely on one particular, you know, countries or two uh, several countries, but we have to diversify, you know, our productions. And nowadays we see more companies are thinking of finding, you know, alternative or finding like uh, branches in different part of the world because in in the long term, you know, I think the the, the pandemic uh, taught us how. Uh, we would uh, be able to survive yes. in this <coughs> current situation. So, Ambassador, <coughs> what are the main imports uh, from Indonesia by Pakistan and the Pakistani businesses? Yeah. So, we uh, import from Pakistan uh, first rice. By the way, basmati rice also very popular. It's very popular. Popular in Indonesia. That's why, you know, we you know import uh, rice and uh, things are uh, more healthy. If you know, if you look at uh, you know the compositions of of, of those rice and uh, the agriculture product like a quinoa, uh, now in the process of mango, 
and um, I think in addition to that, you know, the garments also we import the gar the garment and uh, uh, medical uh, surgical uh, instrument, pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals yeah. also, and um, leather, leathers, you know, garment leathers we also import from from Pakistan. So, what does Pakistan import mm -hmm. from your country, from Indonesia? Mm. Uh, the main uh, in the main export from Indonesia to Pakistan. Is, to Pakistan is palm oil. Palm oil. Palm oil, and then second largest is coal. Okay. So uh, I think those are two largest, uh, you know, product, and the rest uh, raw material for textile like a polyester, right. uh, fiber, you know, uh, paper, you know. Uh, but Pakistan also imports palm oil from <coughs> Malaysia. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, which country is exporting more palm oil to Pakistan? Uh, well, I think Indonesia enjoy, you know, more uh, uh, export to, uh, to to Pakistan. But once again, if you look at the statistic, you see that we need to diversify, you know, our export and import product because, uh, you know, uh, it is not good to rely on one or two specific, you know, uh, areas. Areas where, yes. you know. Uh, once again, we. What about IT, I information technology? Mm -hmm. Because this technology is growing mm -hmm. by the day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how could the two countries, Pakistan and Indonesia, cooperate, collaborate in IT sector? Well, this is very interesting questions because last year's the e-commerce Indonesia we uh, amounted to uh, twelve uh, billion US dollar. 2019 oh, huge. and it's very huge and we project in 2000, uh, uh, 2035 it will reach 52 billion dollars yes that's huge the yeah, IT yeah, yeah. nowadays because the the, the 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 pandemic then people realized how the potentials of the uh, e-commerce e yes. in not only Indonesia I believe also in Pakistan in the entire world entire world yeah. and even it's very interesting also to learn that, you know, nowadays because once again it's because of the pandemic and then we see that women in entrepreneurs become more important because our economy actually are supported by women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Nowadays we, because a lot of, uh, you know, industries collapse and see, you know, the you know, home industries become more and more, you know, dr you know, significantly growing in Indonesia and most of them actually, you know, generated by women. So. Uh, for for these reasons that the Indonesian governments are very supportive to give also uh, trainings to women uh, entrepreneurship. Now Pakistan is very important because if you look at once again the statistic, the global statistic, it reveals that more than fifty two percent of the you know uh, develop developers industries or those related to the you know the e commerce being developed in three. You know, countries in the South Asia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and India. India yes. So Pakistan have a lot of potential in IT. Indonesia have a big market on the e-commerce. Yes. And I think another relevant factor is also in the halal market, because you know, being halal the, food. Tukar, the halal food, you know, yeah. halal cosmetic. There's a yeah. lot of, uh, you know, um, um, avenues whereby. Uh, you know, the two countries could expand further the bilateral relations using those e-commerce and, by the way, you know, the, the, the ITs of the, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan you know, students. Uh, Mr. Uh, the, the defense is, is an important mm -hmm. sector. So what could be done to enhance and expand uh, our cooperation in the defense sector? Well, uh, we enjoy uh, defense corporations, which uh, I think we have uh, once again the uh, the joint defense. Uh, the, the framework is already established in 2011, and now what we learn, you know, all services they have their own, you know, uh, collaborations. You know, army to army, navy to navy, and then air force to air force. So I think with those uh, mechanisms. I think that would uh, allow us to expand further the bilateral relations on defense sectors. In fact, nowadays also people, you know, uh, the official from Indonesia is also studying in, 
you know, in military academy, mili military academy, yes, and other institutions here in in Islamabad yes. and also in Gwadar, and likewise, you know, we also uh, offer to military uh, official from Pakistan to, to go for training to go in for Indonesia. training in Indonesia. In, in Indonesia, we have a peacekeeping centers also, mm. and the peacekeeping centers is very important nowadays. If once again, if you look at once again the statistics, eight. 70% of, you know, the conflicts, you know, located in the uh, Islamic, Islamic, you know, geography. Yes. And the roles of women in the peacekeeping forces become more important. Because yes. once again, you know, um, with the 60% of conflict located in the, you know, oasis geographically, then we, we attach the importance of the women as a peacekeeping role. So I think this is one of the area whereby... Pakistan's and Indonesia can work together, you know, peacekeeping women, peacekeeping, you know, uh, become part of the blue helmet and, you know, uh, yeah. help, you know, to in, in the peacekeeping uh, missions of the UN. The second important element also for the, uh, in addition to the training capacity buildings also, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, the possibilities of having the uh, capacity building on advanced technology. Pakistan has already produced uh, G GT-17 or GT, you know, the uh, air, you know, the aircraft. Ah, yeah, with the collaboration of China. With the collaboration yeah. of China. Yes. And Indonesia is also with Korea. Collaborations with Korea, we also uh, produce uh, uh, key F. This is JF-17 Thunder. JF-17 Thunder, yes. which... The aircraft. The yeah. aircraft. And it is becoming popular in, in some other countries mm -hmm. also. Yeah, I just learned that the Argentines, you know, a couple they of days buying. ago, uh, they purchased this, yes. you know, aircraft from Pakistan. Yes. So I think... This is once again a clearly a testament how the advancement. So, uh, here, you know, the, the uh, joint production of uh, aircrafts and joint production of other military hardware mm. could be possible between Pakistan and Indonesia. Why not? Yeah, I, I, you, you mentioned about, you know, the productions of these aircraft whereby Indonesia is also in collaborations with Korea has also produced now in the process of making, uh, you know, aircraft also the jet fighter. So Great. I think... Those of the area whereby, you know, the two countries also have the potentials to expand the defense corporations. So what's your experience? You have been here for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, experience uh, about Pakistan. How do you look at the culture, the people, and uh, the way we live and the way we eat and the way uh, we live our lives? Well, uh, thank you for asking these questions. Well... I, I was uh, struck by the fact that the two countries share a lot in common, actually. Uh, when I presented the credentials to uh, President Dr. Arif Alfi, he gave me a book, Gandhara Civilization. So I read the book, and uh, the, the next day I went to Taxila. Uh, I saw the remnants of the Buddhist civilizations. Uh, and uh, it start my journey because in Indonesia we also have uh, you know the biggest Buddhist temple Buddhist population. and also Buddhist population. Yes. So uh, it start my journey by identifying the similarities between the two countries because you know I was also impressed by you know the uh, the beautiful natives of uh, you know Pakistan and uh, likewise the two countries are blessed with these beautiful natives, but yes. also with the rich and diverse culture. And uh, when, when I start this and I, you know, start my journey is to identify the similarities between the two countries. And it's very interesting, really, because we share a lot in common. So uh, I identify uh, the similarities not only for the cultures, traditions, like, you know, like the bull race. Oh. Uh, the bull race, you know, which... That's common in Pakistan. Yeah, that's common in Pakistan yeah. and Indonesia. And... Uh, I mentioned about the uh, Islamic architectures like the uh, Faisal Mosque and, and Bajai Mosque in Lahore. Bajai Mosque in Laos, yeah. we have also. And uh, Wazir Khan Mosque in Peshawar. You're right. Yeah. And interestingly, the 
in, in terms of cuisines, both also share a lot in common. So for Pakistani people, you don't need to worry. When you travel to Indonesia, you can easily find biryani, you can easily find pasandai. Kebab. Uh, kebab, you know, yes. uh, you know it's, uh, chicken so, satay. And even pakora. I know, you know, you know pakoras so are available. Pakoras are also available in Indonesia. Available with Indonesian taste. So yeah. I, you know, I'm completely... Uh, you know, my journey to identify similarities, which I'm very, you know, pleased to present it to you later Thank on. Thank you very much. So you can yes, uh, take a look at it yeah. and uh, hope it would encourage you to... Thank you so much, Ambassador. ...to <coughs> visit Indonesia. Ambassador, thank you very much. Uh, listeners and viewers, this is all with today's show uh, in Diplomatic Session. Next week, we'll have with us a new personality, a new guest. Uh, the producer of today's program was Rana Ghulam Mustafa, uh, video engineer Farhan Ali, and executive producer Abdul Rauf Khan. Uh, this show is also available on Radio Pakistan's official website, www.radio.gove.pk. Uh, social media platforms and Radio Pakistan's podcast at podcast.radio.gov.pk. I'm your host, Javed Siddiq, signing off from today's diplomatic session from News and Current Affairs Channel of Radio Pakistan, Islamabad. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you for, for being with us and being a part in this show. Thank, thank you, you once again, also for the invitation. Thank you so much, Javed. Very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Radio Pakistan podcast. 